The mountain is my mother, my father is the sea, this river is the fountain of all that life can be. I'm delighted to be with India's best loved English writer, who's probably also India's most prolific writer and the only writer I know who's been writing non-stop for over seven decades, starting with his debut novel, The Room on the Roof, and continuing with stories such as The Blue Umbrella, The Night Train at Deoli, his wonderful verses, his insightful essays, his autobiographical book, Lone Fox Dancing and Beyond. It's impossible to keep up with him because by the time you finish reading one book, he's out with another one. As the English nut, it's a dream come true for me to be able to meet him and talk to him. Thank you so much, Mr. Bond. Thank you for <clears throat> arranging this little get together. And uh, I look forward to chatting to you and about books, writing, anything under the sun <laughs> that's got to do with literature. My dear little granny was talked a lot. She was very strict. <coughs> Didn't let me talk. Little boys should speak only when they're spoken to. <laughs> she was a real Victorian. <laughs> no second helpings unless I've been a good boy. Yeah. If I'd been troubled or made any mischief all day, I would get one cutlet and not two. If I was speaking good, about I'd... your granny, could you read this uh, verse on granny's proverbs? Okay. <coughs> oh, granny's proverbs, yeah. Where are they? It's... A, hung a hungry man is an angry man. True enough. Great wisdom there, said dear old Gran, as she prepared an Irish stew for the chosen few. Grandad, my cousins and me. But then she turned to me and emote, don't be greedy or your tongue will cut your throat. And if I asked for more of my favorite fish, fish. that small fish, she'd say, is better than an empty dish. Yes, she was very frugal. So an Irish stew, you wanted to know? Yeah. Irish stew is, is a, actually, I suppose the Irish make it that way. The, it's a stew in which you add some milk. So it's got a white or creamy appearance. Right. Hmm? Whereas an ordinary stew is brown. Hmm? Usually a brown stew. So I would differentiate as a boy between a brown stew and an Irish stew. Okay. Hmm. And, and what is the, the line in the poem which goes, uh, your, be careful or your tongue will... Cut your throat. throat. I mean, you, in a way, you, you, you kill yourself by overeating. Ah, yeah, that's so what it's she about in, not, intended, not, yeah? not to be greedy, basically. <laughs> From my mother's side, the family goes back even further than my father's, as far as... But they, they yeah. were of pure uh, British no, descent? No, I wouldn't say. Uh, from my mother's side, I would say Anglo-Indian. Hmm? So it was a mix, in the yes, sense of a mixed it, yeah, heritage? It definitely was. Okay. And uh, father's side, uh, probably British, because his father came out as right. a soldier. Yes. Uh, yeah. In the 1890s. And he did marry in India. Again, it, he might uh, well have married an Anglo-Indian girl. It was somebody he met in in Jabalpur, and he married there, but don't know much about her. Father was born in India, so I mean, both my parents uh, were born in India. All of my four grandparents, including grandmothers, three were born in India. Only one was okay. born in England. And on my mother's side, they go back. My her her father was born in a place called. Dera Ismail Khan, which is now in Pakistan. Right, right. And he worked in the office of Mr. Durand, who created the border, Durand, who right. drew up the border between India and Afghanistan. Right. Which has caused so many problems. Yes. <laughs> Over the years. Uh. So some people consider English to be an Indian language as well, and others are sort of opposed to this way of thinking. When I spoke to uh, Shashi Tharoor, he, he said that uh, you know, English has been on Indian soil since around 16, the year 1600 and it was the language of Indian nationalism and it, it's a language that knits this country together. So I'd like to know what your take is on this. Well, he, he's, of course, it, what he says is true. Um, 
But I also think of English as perhaps being more of an Indian language today than it was before independence. Mm. It's a language that um, we have in a way, what's the Hindi word, Kabzokarod, or, <laughs> or taken from the British and made our own. Mm. Uh, because today, we just look at the hundreds of thousands of schools which uh, teach through English and uh, the, the hundreds of writers that we have working in English. And they weren't there before independence. You know, we just had half a dozen writers like R.K. Narayan and Mulkraj Anand, you know, who wrote in English and, and they had to publish in England. Right. Uh, because we didn't have publishers here. Yeah. And now all our writers, or at least the majority of them, actually publish in India. And they're read in India. When I wrote my first book in 19... published in 1956, it only sold a few hundred copies. But that same novel, The Room on the Roof, is today selling in thousands, hmm? um, 70 years later, because there are more readers yeah. in English. Hmm? So while I would say, in those periods that Shashi Tharoor um, talks about, it was the language of, I'd say, the aristocracy, you know, of, of, of freedom fighters like Nehru or Motilal Nehru, his father. It was the language of the law courts, and it was uh, certainly the, the language that was used by, I think, those who fought for independence because they also had to go to England in, in order to put their case very often. But it was, I would say, important, but it was a minority language. Hmm? Yeah. And uh, today it's no longer a, such a minority language. I think a, a very high percentage of the country is reasonably fluent in it. Hmm? And uh, we print and publish more books than they do in the United Kingdom today. That's quite in an English. extraordinary <laughs> thing. Hmm. I'm sure you've read some of the contemporary Indian writers who write in English, like Amitav Ghosh and Vikram Yes, Seth. but I'm not very familiar with okay. all their work, but okay. I uh, certainly uh, uh, read some of Amitav Ghosh and Amit Chaudhary and uh, um, Alan Seeley. And, uh, uh, Have you read uh, Vikram Seth's work? Yeah, yeah. Some, I he, because like he wrote an entire novel in verse, The Golden yeah, I, Gate. I'm not gr a great one for fat novels, but I liked his poetry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, but his, his, uh, he has a very thin, slim novel called The Golden Gate, yes. which is a novel written in iambic tetrameter. Okay. The entire thing is written in, uh, in verse, but it's, it's a really wonderful book. I'll you read that. you mm. must read I'll it, read it so, yeah. on your recommendation. Yeah, no, no, it's, it, it's <laughs> really, it's really I did worth. enjoy his poetry too, yes. Yeah. And that early travel book, what was that called? The, uh, um, before Suitable Boy, he wrote it. Travel book, didn't he, about crossing China? Something, Something about, about Tibet, Tibet right? Yeah. 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 Mr. Bond, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. It was Thank you, I enjoyed it. You made me talk. Uh, uh, Normally, I'm a very silent person. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm really, really fortunate that mm. you opened up and you were very, very sporting about it. I'm the English nut. Bye for now. I'm the English nut. Bye for now. I have a special announcement to make for the fans of Ruskin Bond which is uh, the launch of a new venture called the Ruskin Bond Collections, uh, which consists of uh, signed copies of his books, uh, combinations of different books, books with objects like uh, this uh, lovely stuffed toy. Timothy the Tiger Cub. Timothy the Tiger Cub. So you're going to find all this and more if you go to www.ruskinbond.in.